slash Blu-ray update, one DVD and six Blu-rays. Um, you guys might remember me uh, talking about how my DVD player broke down. Well, I got a Blu-ray slash DVD player. Um, long time ago, I just forgot to tell you about it, unless I did, and I just forgot that I told you about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been mean, watching a lot of Blu-rays lately. Um, well, not a lot, just like um, written stuff and buying the stuff that I read, which I actually already have on DVD. It's just that when I read them on Blu-ray, uh, the difference was so... Uh, gorgeous that uh, I just had to have it so I uh, you know, started getting Blu-rays um, and you know it, like even on this uh, regular TV this standard definition TV it's, it, there's a noticeable difference to me at least uh, maybe not if I turn around and show it to you but um, actually this is a DVD plan right now it's the uh, first DVD that I'm going to show you that I got. It's uh, look. Uh, it's uh, written and directed by Adam Rifkin. Uh, I think he directed Detroit Rock City. And it's um, excuse me, I'm trying to burn. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, I can't burn. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's about, um, um, yeah, it's, um, it's all shot on surveillance cameras, or, um, yeah, mo for the most part, surveillance cameras, um, and it's basically, just a look into some random people's lives, you know, it's like one of those stories that have all kinds of different characters and stories going on and they're all intertwined somehow, uh, kind of like Crash or Go, um, and um, you see one story is about this um, teacher, this high school teacher who gets like pursued by one of his students, this girl who tries to seduce him and he keeps trying to like walk away from her but she won't leave him alone until eventually, fuck it, I'll just read off the back. There's an estimated 30 million, ugh, 30 million surveillance cameras in the United States. On any given day, the average American is captured approximately 200 times. Every one of us is constantly being observed at our jobs on the street while shopping and sometimes even in, our own, even in our own homes. Every one of our secrets, lies, crimes, and most private moments are all being recorded. But who is watching us? And that's basically the premise behind the movie. But, you know, it's got like all kinds of elements. Like, you know, it's kind of a comedy. It well, starts off like kind of lighthearted, sort of a comedy. Um, like there, you know, there's this, um, uh, God, there's this, uh, manager at a, a department store who, uh, hits on all the girls. He's like, uh, <laughs> uh, he's always like filling them up while they're, you know, behind the register helping people, you know, the camera catches it all and then, you know, you always go to the back and have sex and, uh, it's just funny, like he's always, you know, He's, he's always got that player game, you know, going, he's always talking that player stuff, and he's just really, <laughs> like, even, even the girls know he's full of shit, like, they just somehow, you know, succumb anyway, because he's so charming, and, you know, he, like, that's just, you know, he's a womanizer, basically, and then there's, you know, like I said, the, the teacher and the student, where the teenage girl tries to seduce her teacher, and then, there's these uh, two killers or um, these killers who are like, you know, on America's Most Wanted or something. Not 
I don't know if it's America's Most Wanted, but it's like, all right, these guys, they're like wanted for murder of a cop. And um, so, you know, there's like scenes in this store with um, Giuseppe Andrews and this guy, um, I forget his name, but uh, they're like managing the store the whole night. And, um, there's like supposed to be tension right here in this scene where um, will they rob the store or not because they just uh, kill a cop. So, um, and then like Giuseppe Andrews and this guy, you know, they just have like funny um, dialogue between them, you know, improvised, I guess. And, um, yeah, Giuseppe Andrews, you might know from Cabin Fever. Um, he's, uh, Wednesday, it's got a look behind the scenes, audio commentary with Adam Rifkin uh, in the crew and cast. It's got like alternate deleted scenes, like uh, 45 minutes, I think, total. Just stuff they cut out of the movie, little subplots and stuff like that. Um, outtakes, trailer. Um, that's it. Uh, but it's kind of like, you know, yeah, it starts off as a lighthearted sort of comedy and has a comedic streak throughout, but as it progresses, it like gets more and more serious or suspenseful depending on the, the, the story that we're talking about. It's all really well acted, you know. It's like funny in the right places, tense in the right places, um, dramatic in all the right places. Uh, and I like it, you know, it's one of those movies, like, for me personally, I could just, you know, play on repeat all day or night, and or night. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like a good background ambiance piece. I don't know, I'm just, it's probably just me, but <laughs> um, it's one of those movies I never get, one of those movies I never get tired of watching. <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, anyway, next up, that's the only DVD I got, so. I'm going to show you guys some Blu-rays. Um, like, well, okay, the first Blu-ray I got was uh, Cabin Fever. Um, director's cut, and it's about, let me see, I think like six minutes longer, I'm not sure, but all they really put back in there is like, just some added character moments that just sort of make the movie a little uh, quirky, I guess. Maybe they just cut it for time, but nothing really, nothing much. Just, I mean, nothing really special. But just added bits here and there. But, um, features, it's got like a uh, new commentary with Eli Roth and the cast. And, um, and then all the same features from the Cabin Fever DVD, um, as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, director shorts, the Rotten Fruit includes the Rotten Fruit shorts. You know, uh, directors behind the scene for Family Fruit version Pancake. You know, yeah, it's on the DVD. Um, you see, and you know, the commentary. Let's see. I listened to the commentary. It was. They pretty much said the same stuff they said in the previous commentaries. I mean, they didn't really shed any light, any new light on anything. And um, honestly, Eli Roth is. Uh, I'm starting to see why people don't like him. He's kind of a douchebag. Like, I mean, I won't like going to a rant for like. <laughs> After listening to the commentary, I can you know I can finally see why you know people don't like him, like as a person. Like his movies are good, you know, flawed but good. I'm, I mean, okay, like I don't know, um, but yeah, I can see what people are talking about now. Um, but yeah, that's it as far as features in the.